Hello. Now, just before we start this news episode, I want to make a little uh, Bobby made a boo-boo update. Bobby made a boo-boo. Nothing new there. I state in the last episode, and many people have commented, of course, rightly so, uh, that the Tesla Model 3 doesn't have one pedal driving, which it does. The Tesla Model 3s have had one pedal driving since the autumn slash fall of 2019. So quite a long time. It came through on an update. This car gets updates all the time. I don't really pay attention to them. I've got it set the way I like to drive it. I've now discovered that something that is not called one pedal driving, no, of course not, as if Tesla could do anything so prosaic as that, it's called hold. So you've now got a stopping mode, which is where you've got three settings, creep, roll, and hold. And if you look under that, when you set it on roll, on hold, which I never had done, so I didn't even know what it meant, it then has a very small writer, which I can't even read with my eyesight, that uh, it minimizes range by, it maximizes, <laughs> maximizes range by, by putting on maximum regen and all that stuff. And the car will come to a complete halt, even going down a hill, it will come to halt and hold. When you're going up a hill, you have to do hill starts. I've been trying it out for the last few days. I've had it for over eight, like 20 months. I've had it and I didn't even know. So that's the update. I made a boo-boo. I hadn't checked the software updates. From now on, I will do. I just want to say one thing. The, the intricacies of Tesla's software is a micro niche topic. If you look at the entire world of electric vehicles, it's still a very niche topic. Very, very few people have either had access to or driven an electric car. And a microscopically small community of people have ever driven or in fact own or drive or lease a Tesla. I'm just putting it in perspective. There are literally billions, tens of billions of people who have never even heard of Elon Musk. Not tens of billions, some billions of people who've never heard of Elon Musk or Tesla or anything about it. And so uh, that's not an excuse. I'm not trying to excuse myself. I'm just trying to put it into some sort of context. Anyway, now on with the show. Hello and welcome to an episode of Fully Charged News. Very exciting for me because I'm joined today by the fabulous Jack Scott. Hello. And Jack, I really want to start this off by quickly saying so that episode we recorded with you in the Tesla Model 3 and myself Lovely in adventure. the Polestar 2 mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that my focus and attention that day wasn't so much on the Polestar yeah. as a car and I've since found out that that was the Polestar 2S which apparently should have been rear wheel drive slightly bigger battery much longer range yeah and I'm really confused now because that's what I thought it was going to be then I drove it and sort of forgot I kind of forgot. You were talking about how quick it was, which sort of leads to believe that it was the long range dual, dual motor. motor. Well, I'm With... thinking it felt like a four wheel drive car. Yeah. But you think I, sh uh, pr this is what I'm saying, basically. It's so good to have you on board because a proper <laughs> motoring journalist might have spent the time to work that out. But then the other thing we should seeing of Tesla, because I just, I, this kind of passed me by when it came out. Mm -hmm. The Tesla, uh, the, I don't even know how to say it. We don't know how to say it in this country, plaid. Plaid. Or plaid. I don't know. Plaid Model yeah. S. It's a Spaceballs joke. Which yeah, is I know. I get the never, joke. Never seen it. Oh, oh you should never see it. Seen it. Seriously. Yeah, good yeah. Okay. We'll dig it out on Netflix or somewhere. Yeah, the launch was this week. Massive event. It's the, just about the most Tesla thing Tesla -tastic, I've ever the seen. Through, They're yeah. turning into sort of caricatures of themselves, yeah. these, these Tesla press events. Elon rolling up with the leather jacket on and doing all of this. Yeah. But I mean, it is remarkable what that car is. You know, obviously we, we're not going to see it here for a long time. But the fact that they've managed to push that technology to that extreme level is extraordinary. Because I can't even remember what the, the stats are. Is it a, it's over a thousand horsepower? <laughs> 200 miles an hour, 0 yes. to 60 in less than two seconds. Le it is, oh, it's less than two seconds. It's horrific. Astonishing. As a feat of engineering, mind yeah. blowing. And I kind of get Elon's point of, well, we're doing it just to prove that electric is be the best. Yeah. But have you driven a performance Model S? Yeah. Have, yeah. You, have you gone quickly in a performance model? Yeah. Do you remember thinking, this needs to be a bit quicker? I'm stationary on a very straight road. Oh! Ah! Oh! I can't do it. F hell. Oh, f oh! Oh no! I remember actually feeling unwell. Myself. Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I nearly threw up. <laughs> too. Yeah. I, I de definitely didn't want it to be any quicker. No. Can we drive it much slower? I think the long range is the sweet spot of yes. both the Model Three and Model S because yeah. the performance is just violent. Yeah. So it is. It while is I admire violent. it and I'm glad it exists, I don't much want one. No. Because I mean, I'm intrigued to have a go with the with the yoke steering thing. 
But I mean, because you've seen videos now of people trying to cope with yeah. it. I think it's going to be a disaster, but I love the, the idea of having that absolute clear vision. Is, that I love. You know, there's nothing in the way of it when you're doing that. But then, you know. And it looks incredibly cool. Yeah. I, I was so sure that it wasn't going to make it to production. I was so sure this yeah. was one of those Tesla marketing ploys that everyone gets really excited about and then it disappears before we make it to yeah. production. Yeah. But it's on the car. It's on the plaid. And there's right. videos. Think about the... The half steering wheels on a Formula One car, fantastic. It's right. got a very quick steering then, rack. Because presumably on a Formula One car, that is full that's, lot one way, that's full, full lot the other way. Exactly. But this isn't then. So you would have to do stuff. That, and that's what, so <laughs> you're seeing people, video of people do, and then you know when you just release the wheel and let it slide through your hands? Yeah. It's oh, like, oh, oh, yes. Oh, that could be really bad. doesn't look especially no. practical, but it looks cool. Let's leave Tesla. Enough. 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 Flying ferries. This caught my eye. Okay. Simply because many decades ago, on a little watch TV show called Scrap Heap Challenge, we tried to do a ground effect plane because the the, the Russians did it. So the ground. So we did, I did a lot of research into ground effect plane. So this is a, really a boat that flies like that far off the water. Yeah. So it doesn't go up high. It hasn't got the wingspan. It's got a very small wingspan. But it, it, it's a very low energy way of moving very fast over water. It don't, wouldn't work over land. Yeah. So when you see a, a goose flying, in, you know, doing it's flown from Canada to somewhere, mm. and then it, as it comes into land, it, it can skim just above the water Minimal for a long energy. time. Yeah. Minimal energy. And what it's happening is that it builds up the air pressure between its wings and the water. Mm. There's a specific, and that's called ground, I don't know why, sure. it should be called lake effect because it is basically water. So the idea is there will be a ferry that flies from the UK to the French coast at, you know, quite fast, 250 miles an hour. So really quick crossing, no, no rocking with sea. They're in what, 90 seconds? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like a few minutes oh, to go across the thing. Incredible. And, uh, and it can carry a lot of passengers. Electric, sort of a boat underneath. So it's sort of a cross between a boat and a plane. Mm. That's the idea. And they're developing that now, flying a flying ferry, which is which is going to be really weird, because it's sort of because I went to France a few times on the hovercraft when that was a yeah, commercial yeah, yeah. thing. That was so fun, and that was great fun. Very very noisy, and when it was rough, when the sea was rough, which it was on one occasion, really unpleasant. Oh really? And I was surrounded by tourists who were vomiting, mm, and lovely. someone gave me a baby to hold because the mum was being so sick, and I was like in between a mum and a, and a granny, and the granny was being sick there. I don't get seasick. But that doesn't mean that you're feeling fine when you're surrounded yeah. by people you're vomiting. Witnessing a mass vomit <laughs> is it, it, enough to set and in, you on, off. And in a, in, a, a ferry, in a ferry, you could kind of go out on the, you could lean over yeah, the side and yeah, get a bit yeah, of fresh yeah, air. Yeah. Not on a hovercraft, so, you're inside. How so. does this thing get going then? How does it so get it will moving? go splishy, like a sailplane that, f that flies on sea. Yeah. It goes, and it'll go splish. Oh, wow. And then it'll just go up, and then it'll fly so at that, cool. that, you know, just above the sea level. So it's freakishly clever engineering, isn't yeah. it? Because my only prior knowledge of ground effect is it's using motorsport and, and road cars to suck cars down onto the right. road to create downforce. So yeah. you have these narrow little tunnels and then they have a wide bit in the middle and they get narrow again and that creates this vacuum and it sucks the car down. Oh, right. So I'm guessing this probably has the opposite. It's got to be where the it's reverse. Sort of wide, narrow, wide and it creates an area of high yeah. pressure and sort of pushes it upwards is my guess. That's yeah. probably I mean, wildly I think wrong. It could be. I don't know. I mean, from my long, it's a long time ago when we discussed the possibility of doing this, it is that you can minimize the size of the certainly the size of the wings can be mm. much smaller because you're not trying to get that lift mm. you, it, but it is a combination of lift and weird air pressure phenomena that go along there cool so it's quite cool, cool. but also that it's electric so you can have this electric plane effectively it's an electric yeah. boat plane that goes across it's, there I mean, and charges either end I wonder you know. in the future could that be a, an alternative to air travel a, a far more energy efficient for, for longer distance yeah. journeys maybe I mean if you had a really massive one if you had mm. like a 10,000 seat yeah. Ground yeah, effect yeah. plane that went across the Atlantic. Two Oz and back by sea. <laughs> yeah. In, in eight hours. I'm going to write a science fiction fantasy Aww. novel where that's the case. So this is in development. This thing's coming. Well, that's in development and they're saying it's going to come out in 2022 or something. I Good just Lord. don't know. Uh, the Renault Zoe yeah. broke a very exciting, well, some oh, somewhat you? exciting record was broken. Yeah, it wouldn't be exciting to watch. It was the record for the furthest ever driven in a Renault Zoe on one charge. The Renault Zoe has a quoted range of 245 miles. Yeah. 
and a team very decent. has driven one 475 miles. Wow. Um, it took two days at an average speed of 20. Right. So it wasn't, as you say, it wasn't a spectator sport. No. It wasn't like, it wasn't a, a, an event but to watch. Doesn't but that, that tell incredible? you a lot? Well, it tells you a huge amount about wind resistance, air resistance, doesn't it? If nothing else. It tells you to push a car at 50 or 60, not like crazy speeds, mm. uses an enormous amount of energy because you're pushing it. And if you're a cyclist, you're very aware of that. Completely. Yeah. And yet, if you do it 20 miles an hour where really the wind resistance is almost irrelevant, then you just go for incredible. It's astonishing. That's my, amazing. My two takeaways from that. One is I need to stop giving brands such a hard time about their ina inaccurate range figures because yeah. it's so... Hard it's so random to put a number on yeah. a car's range. It's yeah. so hard. It really varies. We know that from winter driving, yeah. summer driving, motorway driving. It's insanely varied. Yeah. What we do want to see more of, like in the Polestar that you drove last week, is accurate, accurate readouts yes. on the dash. Yeah. I don't. As, as long as that number is telling me the right figure, yeah. then I can Doesn't live matter. with that. Yeah. I, you know, but, but putting a, a, a hard number on what a car is capable of, it's just yeah. impossible. Yeah. I think we have to talk a little bit about Polestar 3. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Now, now I'm trying not to get excited oh, about it, but yes, the picture I, of the cloth. I love Polestar. I love yeah. Polestar. So we had the Polestar 1, which is this kind of really fancy hybrid, proof of concept, halo car thing. Yeah. Then we had the Polestar 2, which we spent some time with yeah. recently. Gorgeous. SUV, saloon, crossover, just looks the business, great to drive, yeah. a, a very real Model 3 competitor. And, and now we're hearing whispers, in fact, we confirmed that the Polestar 3 will soon be unveiled. It's a big SUV. Of course. It's going to use, of course it's an yeah. SUV, yeah. naturally, what else would it be? <laughs> it's going to use Volvo's new bespoke EV architecture. Right. Um, and it's going to be built in America instead yes. of China, which yeah. is interesting. I think that's a very deliberate effort to capture the imagination of the American yeah. uh, market and get them into it. Would that factory have been? Would it be a Volvo factory in America? I mean, I think Volvo do. I think they cars have America, one there right? already, and yeah. that's where it'll be built. Some yeah, Tennessee or something like that. Isn't but it? the only thing about that is, I remember when quite recently when uh, Tesla started building Model Threes in China instead of the USA, the build quality just seem to get a bit better mysteriously right. overnight. So I'm wondering if the Polestar 3 is going to feel a bit oh. panel gappy compared to the 2, which is that built is really meticulously shocking. in so, China. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's yeah, whatever else you can, you can be rude about the Polestar until you're blue in the face, but you can't say it's not well the, built. The quality it's is so undeniable. Good. It's, it's exquisite. so good. Yeah. And I mean, I think I would say it's the combination. It's the skill of the what were Volvo engineers and the designers who who came up with the concept of it in Sweden? That, you know, that's where it, the, the the styling, the engineering was developed in Sweden, but it was built in China. It's that combination has been proven to be extremely, completely, extremely and good. I am being facetious. Before people write mean comments on this video, I'm sure the build quality of the American built Polestar 3 will be just perfect. Just perfect. I like a looser style in my bodywork. <laughs> I, if you can't get your hand in the gap between the bonnet and the door, then where's the fun? Where's the fun? The other thing I think, which is, uh, so there's two stories, but the one I just love, this is another short one, the Ford F-150. Oh, so yes. So they've had 100,000 orders Huge. for it. Huge, yeah. And, that's, and no one's driven it yet. I don't think we in, in Europe quite appreciate the significance that of that is, vehicle yeah. in the US. Like, it it is, I think it's like a, go a Golf. It's like a hatchback. It's completely. Like, Ten years completely. ago. So, you know, that was the car that most people had. It is written into the code of America. Yeah. I think Clarkson had a great fact about if you line up all the F-150s that have been sold, nose to tail, you can go round the equator twice. Wow. They, wow. You know, they, they are just ubiquitous yeah, over there no, and absolutely. it's been received incredibly well i wasn't sure that it would yeah but it's they've they seem to have retaken really to it it's got the biggest frunk i ever did see have you nice. seen that frunk amazing oh, yeah goodness yeah i had a um, bedroom smaller than that they love their trucks the f-150 and the chevy silverado are the big ones and they're doing that electric as well the silverado oh, are they that's coming right. too right um so it's interesting isn't it because we currently there are no electric pickups and a year from yeah. now there'll be, there'll be loads. rivian f-150 side of truck maybe yeah. one day yeah. and uh the bollinger have you seen the bollinger yeah the bollinger really oh, cool because that was one of those ones where we were at the la motor show i don't even know what we were doing there so years ago and i hadn't seen or heard anything about the bollinger and i literally came around the corner and went what's that that's a land rover why is that it? oh my god it's not a land rover because it's much bigger than a mm -hmm. defender and then we had we spent a long time talking to the guy and we did an episode about it but you know it's when you don't you haven't heard 
Normally, when, by the time you and I see a car, we've read the report, we've, we've the seen teases, the thing, we've had, yeah, the, absolutely. had the teasers, had the emails about it. Do you want to, you know, but this was like out of the blue, that thing. But that said, there aren't people driving around in Bollingers yet. I don't know where they are or how far they've gone. Yeah. I wonder if we might get some comments about that. Yeah, Bollinger, drop us a line. Give us if, a, you, if you're driving one and the they've desert. sold 100,000. Yeah. <laughs> so I just missed, missed that fact. I've got to talk about this though. The vertical aerospace, we've got to, I'm so keen to get, get to come and see it, vertical aerospace. So they are a vertical takeoff and landing taxi design. And there's a load of these coming. One of them is going to work. Yeah. I don't know which one. But but it's like a drone that you sit in and it takes yeah. you places. Yeah. But okay. they've had a thousand orders. This is from people like Virgin. Good Lord. Airways. You know, so the, I mean, you know, I'm, all these things, the, the, you've got to have a massive press filter yeah. on stories like that. Yeah. Really, it's like a, a reverse osmosis. You kind of, you've got to be able to get a few drips of reality through because it's so, it's so hard to know what is PR spin and what is real. But clearly, someone is going to start making a vertical takeoff and landing small capacity flying electric machine that can that can move four or six people but the frightening thing is they don't have these things don't have pilots you Could don't want you? to waste space with a pilot did you get one of those i want i want us to review it i'd quite like you to go in it first Brilliant. yeah they're the heaviest <laughs> member of the fully charged team fantastic yeah i i, I oh god you have I to sort of really would, I think trust I the software yeah but i think you are trusting software to, you know, when you think of autopilot, yeah, whatever, you can turn it off and take, start steering. But the, this has got no, this is nothing. Yeah, there's, there's nothing, nothing to grab to, onto no, and no. take over if, no. if push comes to shove. Not that I'd be able to do any better with a joystick, I'm no. sure. No. Um, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. It's astonishing. Like you say, there's so many cool, game-changing new modes of transport yeah. appearing. Yeah. You, you have to sort of manage your expectations and not get too excited about too many things because you yeah. just don't know until it's in front of me. Yeah. Who knows which one is going to be the next Nikola Motors that just turns out to be a pyramid scheme and which one yes. is actually going to be totally game changing. Yeah. But yeah, but, I think we will see unmanned drone taxis. Yes. Yeah. I think we should stop there, Jack. I'm out of stories. Stop, I think we should stop there and have a little bit of lunch. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mentioned quiche, I believe. There's a little bit of a homemade quiche, oh, which uses hell. eggs from my own chickens. Oh, the, the quiche of Robert Llewellyn's very chickens. Wow, this is a privilege. Anyway. Uh, you won't be able to join us for lunch uh, on this particular occasion, but it's been very lovely having you along to listen to Jack and I waffle on. Uh, that's it, really. I suppose we should do all those subscribey things. Yes, absolutely. Because I... you know about YouTube and subscribing. Unfortunately, you do have to say things like, please make sure to like and subscribe. Let us know what you think of the topics that we've discussed oh, yeah. in today's video. A yoke <laughs> steering wheel on a Tesla Model S. I like idiotic it. or... Oh, genius. Mm, idiotic, I think. Uh, uh, and, a, a, and a pilotless uh, uh, flying drone that you just sit in the back would of you? and hope you're... <laughs> yeah, would you would get you? one? <laughs> would you? Uh, that's got to be enough things for today, I think. I think that is. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, if you have been, thank you for watching. Don't forget our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars.